What I want to talk about now are outdoor decks. Uh, it's an area of quite a passion for me because I believe they're done quite badly a lot of the time. Um, and that drainage under the decks and water and moisture which rots a deck away is just often not considered enough. So we're going to take a close look at this project and what deck we're dealing with before so that we can highlight issues, how we fixed it and what we have decided to do and how to do it. So um, a lot of photographs, quite a bit of footage and photographs, so let's get started and see how we go. On this first photograph, you can see here what the state of the deck was and I must tell you that this deck was only seven or eight years old. It looks like it's about 30 years old. Uh, it's not. Look at those. We, what was previously used were nails. There was a mixture of using a nail gun to just shoot nails into the boards as well as pre-drilling the holes and then putting the nails in. But either way, I don't recommend using nails at all. Really, only screws should be used. Uh, on a deck, not, not nails uh, at all. You can see how it's rotted there on the joins. Moisture has rotted this thing away within seven to eight years. Boards were lifting. It was incredibly dangerous. You can see how dangerous it was in that one day uh, a foot just went right through a board. Uh, it rotted to that degree where it just had to be replaced uh, because of the, just the danger of it. And nails were lifting up and out of the deck Kids were catching barefoot and basically causing some real issues, real safety issues with this deck. So when decks are built badly, and this deck was installed by a professional company that does decking, that's all they do. So it just, it's the reason why I'm putting this information out there because this is a badly done deck and there are people who do decks beautifully, but you've just got to be mindful just because a company does decking does not mean they do it well. So hopefully this will give you enough information to ensure that it is being done properly. Now, on this project, uh, this is a photograph that shows the garden beds and the flower beds that were up against the building. This is what, as building bodges, we don't recommend. Keep flower beds and garden beds away from the building structure. We are going to remove those garden beds and we're going to put decking right up against there and we're going to take all that glazing out putting in our triple glazing big sliding door going in there in place of that silly single glazed aluminium cheap windows that were put into this volume built home to start off with um, all that decking will be ripped up ripped up and all of the garden beds removed so we go up to that level as we're removing the garden beds we moved a lot of agaves uh, rosemary plants that type of thing you, this is just to show you how the roots get up and against the brickwork and how they try to get in to the brickwork. So this is a real problem um, and why we don't want garden beds up against buildings. You can see there, look what happens when an agave, a bunch of agaves get established. The root system is enormous and to try and get it out is just something unbelievable. So that's another corner garden bed that we are taking out and we are replacing with decking. Um, hell of a job to pull out all these garden beds. But anyway, they've all come out. So there you can see the larger area that we are now going to deck over, not all this area, but quite a bit of the area and showing you how we've put in the, the new glazing as well. But just a shot of what it looks like when we've removed all of that. Uh, decking. When we pulled up the decking it was on concrete stumps so you can see the pile of concrete stumps there that we've pulled up. You can see how low the decking was as well when you look at the dark mark on the bricks the decking was was very low um, and the ground we should say the deck is probably at the right height but the ground level was much higher so there wasn't much clearance between the deck and the ground level um, and these concrete stumps that we pulled up. It was quite amazing. Some of the stumps, as you can see there, were, were longer stumps. Some were cut in half and just used as half stumps. Um, quite strange, but anyway, that's what was used. We are not using concrete stumps. So here's a close-up of the concrete stumps. You can see with the concrete stump, you can see this reinforced steel that goes through the middle of the stump. Um, that is often what creates the problem. So, Concrete stumps are very good when it comes to downward pressure. 
Um, however, with the steel, that can often, if that gets wet, then it starts cracking up the stump um, and it creates an issue. The, the Rio, getting that Rio wet when it's in the ground, that's what can create problems. And very good on downward pressure concrete stumps, but really terrible on pressure from the side. Now, when you've got soil up against decks, when you get rain, you get a lot of pressure from the side and that is the foundation of your deck. We have chosen not to go with concrete stumps because of that very reason. Because of the Rio, the reinforcing steel that's through the middle that can get wet and cause issues, as well as the lack of, of strength when it comes to lateral pressure. So that's just to give you an idea. I wouldn't recommend the concrete stumps. But here we have our just showing the air conditioning um, and how this added to the issues of water and moisture for the deck because the uh, drainage was just allowed to drip down the wall and under the deck into the garden bed and under the deck, which we do not agree with. There's to show you, once we dug things out and garden beds back, you can see that there's the concrete slab and look at the roots that have gone up against that and we actually had to pull them. They actually started making their way into the concrete slab. Um, do not have invasive root systems and big plants and garden beds up against your building. Um, this will create issues. You can really see quite nicely there on the root systems that attacked. There you can see a, a downpipe and how the roots just started going all around the downpipe, all up against the concrete slab below the brickwork um, vigorously. Moisture starts getting into your building envelope. Um, it, can, it can break down uh, downpipes. So just a disaster. Another, another uh, picture for you showing that even above the waterproof membrane, so that bit of black plastic that you can see under there is the, the waterproof membrane. Um, roots are up and above that because you often find that the garden beds obviously are planted above that. Um, and so roots are getting above and into the concrete slab and you're building envelope where the waterproof membrane is not helping at all. Um, so that's a problem. We also then found that a downpipe going under the deck um, then had stormwater drainage moving away. And you can see a big hole in the middle of that pipe uh, on, in the ground, that big hole was there they think originally the builders so they ran out of pipe they found that there was a hole or someone had made a hole and they just stuck a sleeve over it and didn't repair the hole at all and so every time it rained and water came down the down pipe and needed to go out through the stormwater drainage a, a bunch of water would just leak under the deck and that's because someone just didn't care broke a pipe, didn't care, just stuck a sleeve over it and said that would be fine and it's anything but fine, uh, that big hole there. So that's what we discovered, there's a close up of it. You can see that sleeve that was just put over it, that was originally done. So obviously they knew there was a problem and just didn't bother digging it up and replacing it and putting the sleeve over it, just, just terrible practice from that volume builder. Anyway, now we've seen all the garden beds pulled out. We have seen that the deck has all been pulled out and the concrete stumps. We now start basically moving earth and land so that everything slopes away from the building down towards the garden beds and drainage where you can see all of that water gathering and where it is all ponded. That's where we're going to put drainage. We can see that's where it sits. Um, so we're going to put drainage there to go directly into that stormwater drainage. So it's a good diagram to show you when you pull away and you're looking at your land where you're going to put your deck, look very carefully at it and make sure that it slopes away from the building. Make sure that it is then drained away through stormwater drainage and that no water just sits under your deck, rotting your stumps and basically compromising this deck that you're spending lots of money on so that it can last lifetimes. So you can see here that again, it's not sloping away enough. It's sloping away from the building, you can see, but you can see how it's ponding there. So we need to put some more soil there and get things to slope further away from the building. Although in this particular area, there will be grass where all of that water is. We're just going to run some decking up against the building and curve it around the building. And then where that water is actually where almost where it starts, there will be grass. So that's not 
too bad, but we need a more gentle slope. So they're just showing you a broader picture. Again, water must slope away from the building. We're still busy getting the levels right. Um, but where there's water pooling there, that will be grass. So in a way that's good because we'll be watering our lawn. All of that water can slope away and water our lawn nicely. So here we have fixed the stormwater pipe. You can see there's a new fitting there, the very new white fitting. So that hole has been rectified, incredibly important. And now we're starting to put in our posts. So we have gone with hardwood posts that are going into the ground. Um, a lot of hole digging, incredibly long and arduous process, but that goes deep into the ground and we have put bitumen paint, which is a nasty product, bitumen paint. Um, however, this is where we've said it protects the timber. Any timber that's going deep into the ground or into the ground at all will be bitumen painted with three coats of bitumen paint to protect that timber for its lifetime. So that's just showing you how they're going in. They're concreted in, bitumen painted in, um, so that they're as solid as they can be and will actually be amazing for lateral pressure. I actually went and started kicking the post slightly from the side just to get an idea of the lateral pressure you get. Whereas you kick a concrete post from the side and that lateral pressure is, is not great um, when it comes to concrete than while we've gone with timber. So there you can see the posts starting to all go in in a row. Um, you can see we've started to render around the house as well. So big changes on the house itself. So where there are all those garden beds and the garvies and all that nonsense and rotting decking, that's all been removed, all replaced, and now we're putting in our, our stumps into the ground. There you can see it again, just a nicer photo of showing you what's involved and how everything is bitumen painted. Um, and this showing you how we're now also going to bitumen paint the top of the timbers um, because as water falls down and seeps down we don't want it to rot our stumps at all so the stumps eventually are completely coated in there so that black strip that you see is our drainage so our drainage has fitted into our stormwater so that all of the water that moves and away from the building and gets to that lowest point that's where the drain is and the drain is then angled so it goes towards the stormwater and all of that rain that's going under the deck is drained away through stormwater drainage in the same way as the water that falls on your roof is so that's an important photograph because it shows the levels of the ground sloping away it shows where the drainage is it shows that the posts are completely bitumen painted and concreted in so our foundation is now sound and our water control and drainage is good. This is a close-up just showing how our drainage has fitted into the storm water pipe. And there's another photo of it as well showing how everything drops down and into that drain so that water drains away and, and not into the deck. Here you can see how we've added soil into that area previously where we saw the water pooling. We've added soil there, corrected the levels so that things slope even further away. And that will be, there will be grass. Uh, the deck's just going up against the building there, but there'll be grass where you can't see any posts there. So it will water our grass, but certainly not stick around our foundation stumps. The next photograph shows you how we're now putting the bearers on um, to our posts. Big, big, heavy bearers. Uh, sitting on top of our, of our post there and our foundation. I always love seeing that because we also have put a geofabric um, underneath. Now this geofabric is really important. It, controversial. Some people say you shouldn't put the geofabric down. Uh, others say you do. We have chosen to put geofabric down. What it does is it stops all of the, the soil and that type of thing from, from going through the top layer. But underneath that geofabric, uh, the white layer is, is a black plastic layer underneath that. That is where the water will get through and the water will then be encouraged to slope all the way down towards the drainage. So this is water control, the geofabric. It is soil control and stops the blockages and then water control to get it all the way down. So we have geofabric, everything under the deck. 
so as water falls under there it can very easily go towards the drainage now as you can see already a lot of effort into this not something usually they just come along put stumps in the ground and and deck and off they go and the ground is level and water sits around and it's a problem but here you can see the degree to which we've gone to so here you can see where there isn't geofabric that's where there'll be grass and everywhere where there's geofabric that's where there's going to be decking on top so it's you can see nicely there this is a bit bit more of a close-up showing how the bearer sits on top of the post and then the geofabric is then draining into that drain so there is a gap there so that the water can go into the drain um, and there you can see it just more more lengthways so that little gap in the geofabric is where the black drain is to, to drain all of the water away and there you can see another part of the deck just showing you how it then will also water some of the garden where the water is draining away from the building under the deck and going towards the garden if not in the stormwater drain this is a close-up just showing you what it looks like when we put the geofabric around a post and under the bearer so you can see that there is a nice sufficient gap so that water can get under that bearer and doesn't touch that bearer it does touch the post that's why it's all bitumen painted the soil is raised slightly around the post if you can see that in this in this particular photograph so that if water does come near the post it's encouraged to then move away as if each post is like its own separate building sloping things away from the post we just want water to be kept off our building and we want water to be kept off our posts because they are the foundation to our deck and it must just drain towards either grass and water the grass and suck that up towards flower beds and or the specific drainage that we've put in so hopefully this is demonstrating it well for you there it shows just from another angle how water can get under the bearers but doesn't sit around the post sloped higher at the post and sloped away um, again just another photograph showing you the geofabric that's just showing you the drain what I've done is just lift it up to show you how everything falls down and into the drain how all of the levels getting your levels right on the ground are really important so that everything falls directly into the drain again spend time on this get it right because once that deck goes on you don't really want to start taking boards off and fixing this and so on of course you always can but just get it right so that water goes into that drainage and away from your property and you can see the plastic that is underneath there that it's all going to go into so that is that one now we're starting to put the deck together um, so you can see there above the geofabric you can see what a nice big gap there is now between the ground level um, and where our deck is going to be um, there we can see it all starting to come together very exciting and you can see it bending around the corner how we're hugging the deck now against the building not having garden beds against the building but we're going to have deck against the building um, and then from the deck you step out onto the soil and geofabric below anything decked there's a nice close-up of the geofabric so you can see all those channels how the soil and the dirt is stopped at the top the water is allowed to go through and you can see that it then just channels the hard plastic to wherever it needs to go to um, the geofabric works really well there is some footage on the screws that we used and how we countersink them um, but here's just a couple of photos but there'll be some very specific footage on this just showing you exactly what screws we used um, how how they went in how they were countersunk how the screws have a little dome over the top to help things go away and how critical it is to get that screw into the timber but have it sitting flush not too deep so that water sits in it not too high so that water gets under it we need it sitting flush so again time is taken when each of those screws are put in to just make sure that we get it exactly level as close as we possibly can that's important um, you'll see that we always come back to saying take your time uh, you can see another close-up on the photo showing exactly how we have now 
put that screw in, um, made sure it's as level as we possibly can get it, and it's all going into bitumen painted on the top of the timbers because water will, will fall down through the gaps, through the gaps of the timber boards and sit on the top of the, that timber. So we want that to be protected. So again, bitumen painted. Nasty product, but it does a hell of a job at protecting the grease. We're finally putting down these beautiful, what timber is this, ash? Ah, uh, this is silver top ash. Silver yep. top ash, yep. beautiful. What's it been soaked in? Uh, so it's had a double soaking of Q-Tech, which is sprayed on in the um, wholesaler. Okay. where we get the timber from. And what's Q-Tech? Q-Tech's a natural oil, so uh, okay. yeah, it's just an oil that penetrates into the timber. It's not a acrylic or a stain that is just put on top. Yep. So okay. it's all soaked into the timber. Yeah, Give beautiful. Natural look. This is its own finish. Yeah, beautiful. Now the last deck we had was some nail gunned in. So we had nails going in. Sometimes they would pre-drill and put a nail in. Yeah. But here I see we're going with screws. What sort of screws? Uh, are we're you using, using? an anchor mark decking screw, okay. which is a 60 mil long screw, and they're just a, a great all-purpose decking screw. Okay. And then so you and when you pre-drill in here, so you yep. create almost a little. Do you want to do that on one of them? Yeah. What do you use on the end there to create that nice little recess for the screw? Uh, we've got a little countersink bit here, but okay. I don't like to have these. These screws have a little natural dome on them. Yeah. So we don't over countersink it. We just get it a little bit so yep. that the dome stays naturally on top. Okay. And does that dome help with, with water at I all? Think or it not just, really. It's just more to hold. It's, it's, it's to hold the board okay. and aesthetically it's yep. more pleasing than having all your screws at all at different yep. like six like countersunk heights yep. a lot of people will just go to town on the deck and you'll have screws in too low screws in too high so it gives you a nice purchase and you know that you're always going to have your 20 mil of purchase right okay. on your decking as well yep which is a, a main thing otherwise you'll just start twisting and buckling and pulling up yeah, fantastic. Yeah, okay. so we're just setting up our train track boards, which is what we call, yeah, train tracks. Train track boards. Yeah, so we set out every fifth board, make sure that they're all straight. Yeah. And then we infill in between and just use our packers to make sure it's all, because it's natural timber, so it has a little bit of discrepancy in size. Yep. So some might be 141, some might be 142. If you just lay board by board by board, by the time you get to the end, you tend to be out of square. Right. Okay. So we just sort it. We do our train tracks all the way through. We know we're square, we know we're parallel, yep. and then we just didn't fill. Brilliant. And yeah. this is this is important, I would imagine, the distance between the two joists. Yes. Otherwise we can get too much bending. What yep. what distance have you used here? What's uh that? Australian standards with the twenty mil decking is yep. a four fifty center. So okay. Yep. Four fifty center yep. when you're using this size board. Yeah. Twenty mil. Okay. Yep. Yeah, sounds good. So there you can see how everything is bitumen painted over the top before we're now going to lay our decking boards on top of those timbers. Um, so this is this is the degree to which we go to. Uh, it's a good photograph there showing that. Something that's just a bit of an aside, we put up a big swing structure, which I just uh, would, would like to show. This was something that I really wanted, these hanging hammock chairs type of thing. We dug some very deep holes, um, put in some stones down the bottom for drainage. Um, the, the holes were, gosh, we had a Billy the Apprentice put those in and they, it was, took about two days to dig, um, because they were around 1.2 meters deep. Um, so there you can see the two big holes that are now on the side of our deck, um, which garden bed will go around it. Um, there's creeping passion fruit on the fence. We can sit in our hammocks and pick the passion fruit was the idea. Um, and you can see the deck stretching all along there now looking beautiful and boarded off. So there's the deck. Now the grass is also planted. So you can see you step off the deck and onto the grass. Um, so things are really beginning to come together. And there you can see how we've run the timber just a meter um, away from the building and as you remember sloped away to feed to to give a drink to all of that grass um, and it slopes away from all of the timber the house is rendered now we've got all the glazing in and all the garden beds are removed from the house they're all 
down towards the other property. And we are planting, you can see that back fence where you can see a neighbor. We're planting some hedging there that will go to four meters and, and, and basically give us privacy. And just in front of that, we've planted some fruit trees, which we will keep at a height that we can pick so that uh, we have fruit, we have privacy hedging, all of that will grow in time. So here you can see the deck going out there where the st swing structure will be and our, our passion fruit up against the fence. And these are the posts, enormous posts. Uh, I got this from a wonderful guy who's probably about an hour away from us. Um, they are Cyprus. Um, however, he only basically chops down the cypress trees that have the cancer. It's, well, it's, it's a type of disease. Uh, it's not cancer, it's a canker. Basically, it's a, it's a disease that um, affects the cypress here in Australia to quite a large degree and decimates a lot of beautiful cypress trees um, and kills them. They die. So, and there's not much you can do. Uh, well, now currently at the filming, it's not a lot you can do to save it once it's, it's got to a certain level. So he will only um, cut those, those cypress trees. He mills it himself and then brings it down with his daughter. They brought it on a big trailer, uh, brought the post down, beautiful looking posts, which again, everything that's going into the ground are over a meter of going to ground. Those posts are around four meters high. Um, and we put nearly 1.2, 1.3 odd meters into the ground. Um, very thick posts, beautiful cypress posts and bitumen painted with three coats at the bottom that's going into the ground. So there you can see they're ready to go into the ground and are protected and then will be put up. So there they are, they're just supported all into the ground. We've got a number of those posts going together um, and you can see they're together. So two big posts and we will run one straight across and we will hang our, our uh, beautiful chairs from there. So you can see how deep that is and we um, bury that in concrete and that's it. And these are just some photos when the sun comes out and you've got a beautiful deck done. Um, this is what it looks like. Um, just something glorious to look at. Um, you can also use products like mod wood and these composite products that are plastic wood basically, um, recycled plastic mixed with some timber. Um, you know, sustainably and ethically it's, it's a wonderful thing to do, um, to, to reuse this plastic. Um, a lot of glues and things. I, it's just something I feel, I, I have no problem with that um, and I think sustainably it's a wonderful idea and you don't have to maintain it, you don't need all the oils and so on. Um, some people have said that it gets a bit hot um, and you know, you're walking on plastic and plastic gets hot in the sun, um, but uh, yeah, I, I, I don't have a big problem with it um, and certainly from an, a sustainability point of view, not having to maintain that at all, uh, makes an enormous difference and is a wonderful thing. But for me, I just adore timber so much um, that, yeah, we have used timber in this particular case. There you can see the beautiful look of it, the feel of it when you walk on it, the, the neutralness when sun hits it, it's not as burning hot, it's timber. Um, yeah, just showing you some, some beautiful photos and then showing you the edging there. Uh, that was my wife's idea and she, she loves that. Um, showing the edging, just following it, just basically putting something around the house that is decking that goes all the way around, creating like little walkways and platforms and so on. Thanks. Front. Now, what we've used to treat the decking, my goodness, this decking came pre treated um, with a, a treatment that is a company petrochemical based, um, unfortunately. Uh, something I didn't realize or didn't know when this came along. It was actually soaked in the stuff so that it protects it as much as possible. Um, and I found it pretty useless. Um, the sun got to it. Uh, this is all Western and Northern sun and just absolutely smashed it in no time whatsoever. Even though it was soaked in it, even though coats were applied afterwards, I found it quite useless. However, I found a wonderful company uh, here in Geelong, uh, a product called Deck Dock. Uh, this is what 
I have now used um, retrospectively and it is fantastic. When the sun hit that, we put on just before the Western sun, it barely made a difference. Um, and it, it's, it's just a wonderful product. It uses lanolin. So just like I love in the, in the wool, if you don't strip the lanolin out and wool carpets, uh, they have actually used lanolin and have an agreement with sheep farmers and so on, used the beautiful lanolin from the sheep. And that is nature's UV stabilizer. That is nature's waterproofing agent. Um, and that's a big part of what's in this uh, deck dock. So um, I think a wonderful idea. I trialed it. I had a look. They make cleaners, as you can see here as well. They clean it all up. I'm not big on sprucing product all the time, but I was just blown away by this deck dock product um, and a very big fan of it. There you can see applying it to the edges. I think it's really important that you apply to the sides. Don't just go over the top. You know, sun and moisture always hits that cut edge uh, as well. And that's where it starts to rot out on that cut edge, on the front cut edge. Make sure you go to the cloth and get some beautiful lanolin and oils and things in there to protect that timber. So there you can see I'll try to go in between as much as possible, being probably quite over pedantic, but that's what I've done over there. And there I am basically applying the oil as lightly as possible, thin coats uh, with the sheep's wool um, going over it. And you can see how the sun absolutely smashed, smashed it before, but you can see the before and the after that timber's just come up so beautifully, putting on the deck dock, and it stayed like that uh, when the sun hit it through summer. Faded a little, but, but only a little, uh, whereas previously it faded an enormous amount. Very disappointing. So that's how beautiful the timber now looks once we've treated it with this deck dock, um, and very happy with the result. We'll definitely be using that each year. And this is just a small photo of what we did on, on the outside, at our front door uh, also decked and created a, a box that is a, a massive box with a handle there where we can put parcels for um, uh, deliveries and things like that they can go in there uh, we get eggs delivered uh, they go in there everyone knows about our little box all our courier people and our delivery people where they can lift that up put it in there and it's out of the weather out of the rain out of sight uh, it's waterproofed it has plastic covering over the top slats so um, just something that's interesting that I think is quite essential with the amount of deliveries that happen these days. And that is all I wanted to speak about. A lot of photographs. However, there'll be some footage now just giving you detail on, on what I've discussed, but showing you on site and giving you detail there too. So I hope that this has helped you to show how you should build a deck properly. All right, let's talk about the deck and exactly how we've done it in the backyard here. Decks are done in a multitude of different ways. Um, very confusing, um, very good ways, and a lot of very, very bad ways in which it's done. So I just wanted to talk through exactly how we're gonna do it in this case and why we're doing it in this case. Here is our house and our building. Here is where we wanna keep water away from the building and we want everything to slope down. Our deck is going to go all the way out through here and we want to keep water away from the house. So what we've done is excavate soil away from here. The last deck absolutely rotted out and that's because water was allowed to fall onto the deck, water settles under the deck, simply rots the timber. If there's not enough ventilation, if there's not enough drainage, those timbers just rot out. Deck looks beautiful. beautiful for a few years, even up to five years, and then what a complete waste of resources as you rip this up and it just starts rotting and looking ordinary. So, what are we gonna do? Water is the enemy here when it comes to decks. Decks are outdoors, they're gonna get rained on. So, we excavate the soil, we run the soil and slope it and the landscape away from the building, always number one. What we then do, we'll, we'll put a geofabric down from the house sloping all the way down to our drain over here which we put in the middle so this drain will be running right across we will have everything under the deck sloping towards this drainage system which is the same drainage system that's connected to the stormwater pipes and drains to the outside how are we going to keep it up off the ground 
you've got steel posts, you've got concrete stumps, you've got treated pine, cypress posts, all of these different options. It is really important that we have very good ventilation under the deck. Air needs to be able to pass through under that deck because water is going to fall down over there. That's number one, so we will have the correct clearances. Number two is that in this case, we have decided not to go with concrete stumps. The biggest reason for that is a concrete stump will have metal reinforcement through it. You'll see a metal rod coming through the middle. You're highly dependent on that. The last deck that we pulled up here had was concrete stump with metal rods. And you could see that just due to the water, um, that metal was completely rotting out. Um, and it, it had completely rusted out and so everything starts deteriorating. So timber is through a lot of consultation what we have decided to run with in this particular case. Timber, we have H4 treated pine. Now, treated pine is, a, in my opinion, a pretty revolting product. However, in this particular case, we've gone with H4 treated pine because it has a guarantee of 25 years in the ground. Um, we have also gone with cypress. We have put this down in the ground. We have then concreted it under the stump so that we are putting that, that treated timber into concrete and there's concrete below the stump. Then we have poured concrete up to a level of the stump and then we have backfilled with soil um, so that it looks level, but they are deep down. We have used cypress posts and we have used H4 treated pine. What we've then also done is we've taken another revolting product, uh, bitumen paint or called tar paint and we have coated the timber with three coats of the bitumen paint. That's why they are looking black and the stumps are black because they are treated pine and cypress and three coats of bitumen paint buried into the concrete, backfilled with soil. And then when we put our timber above this on which the deck's going to go, it's off the ground it, there is geofabric going to run all the way down under here, so as the rain falls onto it, everything is directed into drainage and there will be ventilation underneath. This is what we decided to go. Why not concrete stumps? Not just the reinforced steel, but the other reason is because of lateral pressure. So these, this deck is going to have soil and garden beds up against it. Now when that happens, concrete stumps have very poor lateral pressure. If, you, if this was a concrete stump and I kick the stump from the side or put pressure on from the side, it will crack and tumble over very, very easily. That's not what we want because the soil, when it gets rained on, um, when there are all different pressures of expanding and water, it's going to put pressure sideways onto the stumps. And for that, nothing beats timber. Concrete will be poor in terms of that. Concrete's very good when it comes to downward pressure, but not lateral pressure. So that's why we've gone with the timber. We can put force onto this, onto this timber from the side. This is not going anywhere. It's not budging. So therefore, all of these garden beds, soil, pavers, all the other landscaping that's going up against it is not going to have a problem. This is the strongest option. And with the three coats of bitumen paint, the builders have said that in my lifetime, if this deck gives way, they'll come back and they will do it for free. Let's hope they're still around in my lifetime. But that's 25, 30, 40 years. Um, they reckon the deck will still be good. Obviously, you've got to maintain the top and so on. But the foundation of this deck, um, that's something that because we're going to this trouble, will hopefully be here for my lifetime. Um, we're not going to touch a stack for 40 years. That is sustainable. Yes, we're using bitumen paint. Yes, we're using plantation timber and treated timber. Not really nice products that I want to use. However, in my opinion, this is justified when it's going to last an incredibly long time. Instead of replacing the deck and going through three or four decks, we're going to have one deck. So using a bit of that material, in my opinion, is justified because of longevity. And I'm very big on operational and maintenance energy, not just embodied energy. So if we've got to use something that's a little bit nasty and use a little bit of it, but it's going to give us two decades more of life, I personally think that that can be justified. And that's the choice we've made here.
So we will watch the construction, we'll watch the geofabric being laid, and we'll watch the timber going on top, but this is the basis of um, our deck. Welcome back to the decking, stage number two. Um, this is where we have now laid geofabric. We have laid the geofabric, as you can see, from the building down and away from the building. A lot of grading has taken place here. Where we have used all of the soil that we dug out to now move the soil up and closer to the house to build it up so that it's higher at the house level. The ground level is much higher here than it is down here. So that when rain falls through the deck, it lands on this higher part, it lands on this geofabric material that you can see is a much harder plastic below here and it will then run all the way down. Again we're using Seeger tapes to hold this all together. Rain, rain runs away from the house down the geofabric. When it hits higher areas like where our stumps are, these stumps, the soil is built up here. The reason for that is when it gets the higher part it will come down and we're creating valleys that allow the water to go under the bearer. So we don't have water sitting up against here. The water falls and it wants to come down. Build up these areas, let the water come down, let the water go under the bearer. Where's it going to go? Well, the water's going to go under here and it's going to go into the drain. So here's our drain that we showed you earlier. Everything is directed down to the drain. Stormwater system all goes out into the street and away from your property. The same is happening down there. Um, the land has been graded so that everything comes down towards the drainage, so that everything's there. Over on this side, we try and get the land to grade away from the building, but there's going to be grass there, and so we're not going to put drainage there. We're going to let that grass suck up all of the, the water and get plenty of water and be fed. The same thing is what we're going to do down on this side. We're going to grade everything that way. We're going to have a beautiful timber structure with hanging hammock chairs type of thing um, that we're going to try and grow some grapevine on. Uh, we've got passion fruit there, so we want the water to get to there and hopefully our grapes and our passion fruit will be very thankful that we've directed all the water towards it um, and away from the house. That's the main thing. The bearers wanted to show you these. These are beasts. Uh, they're cypress uh, posts. They are off the ground as you can see and they allow the water to go under so water is never going to sit up against these cypress posts. They are incredibly strong. Um, the cypress posts, you can imagine when our decking goes down from the side, you can bang on it down, you can bang on it. This is going nowhere and it's off of the water. Of course water is going to fall on top of it but water is not going to sit on it and under it. Um, we've coated with bitumen paint here as well so and everything in the ground is coated with three coats of bitumen paint so we've done this because we want the deck to last we want it to be safe and we want it to last a long time and you will not see many decks that have this underneath this is the amount of care that needs to go into decks um, to prevent water from rotting out the bearers then everything rots out, the deck's dangerous, it starts breaking, the deck starts falling apart over, uh, after whatever it might be, five years, ten years, maybe twelve. This is going to be decades. This deck is going to outlast me, um, I, I'm hoping. And this is the talk from the builders and, and the way we've done it, that this deck will last decades and decades and decades. As long as we maintain the top, as you do need on any decks, the structure and the foundation is so strong and so sound. Uh, it's going to be a very, very long time before we're going to have to redo any decks. That is what's sustainable. You may need to use some preservatives. You may need to use some bitumen paint. But doing that little bit and having a deck that lasts half a century um, is a lot better than building it badly and replacing decks every decade uh, or less. Um, that is my opinion and that is why we have gone to this enormous effort to get water away and off any structure of the deck um, and keep it here for a long time.